Hey everyone, I'm Mr. Willis, and you will love economics. The number one goal of every society is to promote long-run economic growth. Long-run growth means that an economy has the capacity to produce a greater quantity of real GDP output with the full employment of their resources. The potential to produce more goods and services throughout the economy means more utility for consumers, larger profits for domestic firms, and greater social welfare throughout society. The opposite of this is long-run economic contraction. Long-run contraction means that an economy has a lesser capacity to produce real GDP output with the full employment of their resources. The economy simply can't produce as much as it used to, even at full capacity. The smaller potential to produce goods and services throughout the economy means less utility for consumers, reduced profits for domestic firms, and less social welfare throughout society. Changes in the determinants of long-run aggregate supply can ultimately cause changes in an economy's capacity to produce real GDP output. It's a trap! But besides changing potential real domestic output, Long-run economic growth or contraction will affect economic conditions for all participants in the aggregate economy. Among these are income levels, consumption levels, and the standard of living. In this video, we're going to investigate how long-run economic growth and contraction affect economic performance and important economic indicators using the aggregate demand and aggregate supply graph. Let's begin with an historical example. In 1913, Henry Ford incorporated the assembly line into the production process in his automobile plants, dramatically increasing the productivity of his labor force. Within a decade, the assembly line was being used in factories across the country, producing home appliances and other popular goods and services in massive numbers throughout the 1920s. As a result of this technological innovation, domestic firms produced greater quantities of real GDP output at every price level. This increase in productivity led to an increase in short-run aggregate supply throughout the United States economy. However, this technological advancement and boost in productivity affected aggregate supply in the long run as well. After this fundamental change, the capacity of the United States economy to produce real GDP output increased. Using the assembly line, the production possibilities of domestic firms increased for good, as this new technology changed the production process forever. Ultimately, the incorporation of the assembly line caused an increase in long-run aggregate supply and increased the production possibilities of the American economy. The United States had experienced long-run economic growth. With this fundamental change in long-run aggregate supply, the United States economy had a new long-run equilibrium. With the full employment of its resources, the United States economy's potential to produce a real GDP output increased from QF to QF2. The unemployment rate at QF2 remained at 4 to 6 percent because unavoidable frictional and structural unemployment still existed. But the workers who were currently employed could now produce more because of an increase in productivity due to technological innovation. At our new equilibrium, prices decreased in the long run and goods and services were more affordable for consumers. Income levels rose as more productive workers earned higher income. And consumption levels increased as consumers bought more economic goods with their increased income. Lastly, the standard of living increased in the United States, as an increase in real GDP output led to an increase in real GDP per capita. One last point to make before we move on. Notice that the United States economy experienced an increase in real GDP output, but is not in a GDP gap. If this increase in productivity had only affected aggregate supply in the short run, then the United States would have opened up an inflationary gap, producing a real GDP output of Q2. Producing this level of output would have meant that the American economy was producing real GDP output at a rate that is greater than its potential at QF, and the economy as a whole would eventually overheat. But, because the assembly line changed productivity in the American workforce in the long run, the United States economy's capacity to produce goods and services increased, meaning that a quantity of Q2 is no longer a level of output that is too fast or unsustainable. Instead, it's the level of output that the United States economy could and should be producing at its full potential, making it the new quantity of full employment. Instead of a GDP gap, the American economy is in a new long-run equilibrium, with greater output produced and deflated prices. Let's do a few more examples and analyze the impact of long-run economic growth and contraction on economic conditions. <laughs> 
Suppose that the Russian economy is at long-run equilibrium, and the United States announces new sanctions against the Russian government, cutting off trade and access to important resources for Russian firms. Russian firms will find it harder to produce goods and services, as important inputs are now more expensive and harder to find. Workers will have fewer resources to work with, and firms will have less capital to use in the production process. As a result, domestic firms will produce lesser quantities of real GDP output at every price level. This decrease in resource availability and trade will lead to a decrease in short-run aggregate supply in the Russian economy. However, the reduction in resource availability and trade will affect aggregate supply in the long run as well. After this fundamental change, the capacity of the Russian economy to produce real GDP output decreases. The economic sanctions placed on the Russian government will cause a decrease in long-run aggregate supply and decrease the production possibilities of the Russian economy. Russia has experienced long-run economic contraction. With this fundamental change in long-run aggregate supply, the Russian economy has a new long-run equilibrium. With the full employment of its resources, the Russian economy's potential to produce a real GDP output decreases from QF to QF2. The unemployment rate at QF2 is still 4 to 6% because unavoidable frictional and structural unemployment still exists. But the workers who are currently employed can produce the same quantity that they used to because there are fewer resources to work with. At the new long-run equilibrium, prices increase in the long run, and goods and services are more expensive for consumers. The national income level falls, as less productive workers earn lower income. And consumption levels decrease, as consumers buy less economic goods with their decreased income. Lastly, the standard of living decreases in Russia, as the decrease in real GDP output leads to a decrease in real GDP per capita. Suppose the Indian economy is at long-run equilibrium, and the Indian government announces new measures to reduce tuition at colleges and universities around the country. Higher education in India will become more accessible. Students and other potential members of the workforce will seize the opportunity to learn new skills and acquire human capital. These skills will be used during the production process and make the Indian workforce more productive. As a result, domestic firms will produce greater quantities of real GDP output at every price level. This increase in productivity will lead to an increase in short-run aggregate supply in the Indian economy. However, this boost to higher education and worker productivity will affect aggregate supply in the long run as well. After this fundamental change, the capacity of the Indian economy to produce real GDP output increases. When these new skills and human capital are used during the production process, Indian firms will be able to produce a greater quantity of real GDP output than they used to at full employment. This increase in human capital and labor productivity will cause an increase in long-run aggregate supply and increase the production possibilities of the Indian economy. India has experienced long-run economic growth. With this fundamental change in long-run aggregate supply, the Indian economy has a new long-run equilibrium. With the full employment of its resources, the Indian economy's potential to produce a real GDP output increases from QF to QF2. The unemployment rate at QF2 is still 4 to 6% because unavoidable frictional and structural unemployment still exists. But the workers who are currently employed can produce a greater quantity than they used to because they are more productive. At the new long run equilibrium, prices decrease in the long run and goods and services are less expensive for consumers. The national income level rises as more productive workers earn higher income. And consumption levels increase as consumers buy more economic goods with their increased income. Lastly, the standard of living increases in India, as the increase in real GDP output leads to an increase in real GDP per capita. Now suppose that the Japanese economy is at long-run equilibrium, and the Japanese government places a 5% excise tax on plastic. Plastic is a vital resource in the production of goods and services in the Japanese economy, and a 5% excise tax means Japanese firms will find it harder to afford the plastic needed to produce goods and services. Firms throughout the Japanese economy will have fewer resources to work with, and, as a result, domestic firms will produce lesser quantities of real GDP output at every price level. This increase in taxes on inputs will cause a decrease in short-run aggregate supply in the Japanese economy. However, the increase in taxation on an input will also affect aggregate supply in the long run as well. After this fundamental change, the capacity of the Japanese economy to produce real GDP output decreases. As long as the excise tax is in place, 
Japanese firms will struggle to produce the same quantity of real GDP output that they used to at full employment. The 5% tax on plastic will cause a decrease in long-run aggregate supply and decrease the production possibilities of the Japanese economy. Japan has experienced long-run economic contraction. With this fundamental change in long-run aggregate supply, the Japanese economy has a new long-run equilibrium. With the full employment of its resources, the Japanese economy's potential to produce a real GDP output decreases from QF to QF2. The unemployment rate at QF2 is still 4 to 6% because unavoidable frictional and structural unemployment still exists. But the workers who are currently employed can't produce the same quantity that they used to because there are fewer resources to work with. At the new long-run equilibrium, prices increase in the long run and goods and services are more expensive for consumers. The national income level falls as less productive workers earn lower income. And consumption levels decrease as consumers buy less economic goods with their decreased income. Lastly, the standard of living decreases in Japan as the decrease in real GDP output leads to a decrease in real GDP per capita. And that's long run economic growth. Be sure to subscribe to the channel by hitting the red button below so you can receive alerts about new videos when they become available. If you enjoy the channel or find my videos useful, let me know by liking the video and feel free to leave a comment below. We have full video lectures on every topic in micro and macroeconomics, as well as quick macro and micro minute videos for cram sessions and quick reviews. If you'd like to learn more, you can click here for my long run aggregate supply video, or you can click here for my macro minute video on comparing long run aggregate supply and PPCs. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time on Jubal Law of Economics.